What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at how Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool embarrassed Manchester United at Anfield in the English Premier League. Now before we get into the tactics of each team, check out both my books. There's links in the description below and check out the once video analyzer. That is also in the description. It's the program I'm using to make this video. And finally, check out my new tactics course, all that in the description. And let's get right into the tactics behind both teams in their Premier League matchup. So the first sequence that we're going to look at is Manchester United in build-up and a few problems that they could have going forward. So as we know, Casemiro isn't heavily involved in Manchester United's build-up phase. He usually fans out to one side, usually the left-hand side when Varane is playing as a central defender on this right-hand side. This allows Varane to then jump further forward, almost as a second holding midfielder alongside Casemiro or Fred dropping deeper. This then makes Casemiro's role in build-up more so a role to move opposing players rather than actively creating superiority for Manchester United and progressing them forward. So with this, we put Varane in Darwin Nunez's cover shadow when Nunez goes to press, blocking the fullback, but usually they would then rely on Diego Dalot in the wide area to progress around the front three from Liverpool. And why this presented so many problems for Manchester United in their match and wasn't largely effective is because of the Liverpool pressing now is much more cohesive than we've seen this season and players starting to get on the same page and they wouldn't do very much different if anything but they would have their players come inward from wide areas Mo Salah and Darwin Nunez pressing from out to in trying to block these passes to Dallow and the wide areas being covered by Cody Gakpo in the middle and also we have a very high intensive work rate from our midfielders to jump out into wide areas when they did break the first line of pressure. And this was actually a source for Liverpool to set pressing traps. So if the ball would go to Dalot, we would have the back pressing from Nunez and mid the midfield three staying well connected and jumping out with a link player in offensive transition to get the ball and find either half spaces and make final third actions that could lead to goals. So this could actually be a very promising situation if Dallow would get the ball here because we'd have Nunez blocking circulation, midfielders jumping out, and then our back four remaining intact or Andy Robertson jumping out either way. Now when Liverpool were in their build-up phase, we saw a much different sequence from them. Their buildup was much more effective than Manchester United and partially because of their emphasis and ability to switch from a diamond and a midfield box in this buildup phase. So first with our diamond we have a lot of emphasis on Cody Gakpo. He's playing between the lines and able to overload either half space and really play between holding midfielders for Manchester United. Now for Manchester United under Eric Ten Hag, their two holding midfielders are comfortable being separated and disconnected horizontally. Usually the number 10 uses his cover shadow to fill this gap, but in this match particularly and against Liverpool in general, their emphasis on playing with a false nine or a striker who can drop between the lines and focus on progressing in these areas makes an opponent like Manchester United very prone to being beaten in these areas because Casemiro is drawn out to Harvey Elliott and now Fred is overloaded between Jordan Henderson and, and Cody Gakpo. They're at a numerical disadvantage and a four against three in midfield making it very straightforward for how Liverpool will break down Manchester United. And with the first line of Manchester United being led by Marcus Rashford, simply cutting circulation and not blocking any midfield passing options, it makes it very, very difficult for Manchester United to defend, defend against this system. Now, when Liverpool were also in possession, they could also quite easily switch to a midfield box. And what this would look like is we'd have Harvey Elliott higher up up in the half space between the lines out of the reach of holding midfielders and playing off the shoulder of usually Casemiro. Then we would have our other three midfielders being joined by Cody Gakpo dropping off deeper into these situations to create numerical advantages. So we see exactly where the numerical advantage is created against Fred. He's at a two verse one and when Jordan Henderson drops to the ball between 
players in the front three of Manchester United, he'll draw Fred out and create even more space for Cody Gakpo. So it, again, it was very straightforward for how Liverpool could break Manchester United's press and not just break their press, but break their press in the half space, making it very dangerous for them going forward. And with Manchester United's central defenders being pinned by Darwin Nunez and Mo Salah readily available to make runs in behind, neither central defender was able to step into midfield to take away this man advantage, giving Liverpool free license to progress the ball. So now higher up the field, we start to see similar rotations and movements from Liverpool as we've seen in past seasons and throughout the whole of this season. But how they implemented it was much, much better today than we've seen recently. So we have Jordan Henderson, Fabinho, and Har Harvey Elliott all making up an asymmetric midfield three. And as we stated before, Cody Gakpo joining the midfield three and creating a midfield four, switching from a box and a diamond. This remained the same. And here we have the right fullback from Manchester United jumping towards Cody Gakpo and following his run, joining the midfielders to not allow them to create numerical superiority. So what would happen would then be three defenders would be left to defend Mo Salah and Darwin Nunez readily available to use this space and create isolation against the Manchester United back line. But in the first half, it was a much better shape from Manchester United, and they dealt with this Liverpool pressure much better than in the second half when everything fell apart. But we would see the back line of Manchester United put under a lot of pressure because of the dropping of Jordan Henderson and the man orientation of Fred jumping, forcing a large amount of space to be created between the lines, not having the back four step with the pressure and consolidate the team and have their compactness intact. So this would then play into the Liverpool game style of a lot of transitions and taking advantage of space left by their opposing team. And again, we'll see Jordan Henderson's movement causing Manchester United problems. Now a simple movement that Liverpool have done throughout Klopp's whole time at Liverpool simply a central midfielder dropping the half space outside of the width of the central defenders becoming a deep line playmaker and now here we have scott mctominay just being drawn out slightly tracking this movement while the ball is being circulated and this simple movement creates a lot of different changes so because as we mentioned the two holding midfielders from manchester united are readily available to disconnect horizontally to track central midfielders in the half spaces. So now Liverpool have many different routes to find central players facing forward. So we have players like Harvey Elliott checking in the half space, drawing out Casemiro as well, disconnecting these players further and allowing them to then access Fabinho to play forward or a more direct route. If the defenders can see these passes and play them, they could simply break the Manchester United holding midfielders straight away into Darwin Nunez to lay off to Cody Gakpo. And as a fail safe, they always have a diagonal switch to create isolation against the fullback with runners in the half spaces creating underlapping runs. So in the second half especially, this is a lot of where Liverpool's success came from and caused Manchester United a lot of struggles. And now we'll take a look at transitions, one transition phase on how Liverpool's entire structure fits together and how they attack, defend, and how it's very coherent with their style of play. So we have Cody Gakpo on the ball, and as we've seen him dropping between the lines defensively, he also is a very crucial player in transition, linking up the attack going forward. So we have Cody Gakpo on the ball, then we have runners with Mo Salah and Darwin Nunez running in behind, isolating defenders and creating 3v3 situations. So as we said, Cody Gakpo dropping between the lines not only in the offensive phase, but also causing Manchester United a lot of problems in the de defensive phase and then transitioning into attack as well and creating their success in transition, making them very dangerous with runners in the half spaces and being able to isolate defenders off the shoulder with the individual quality going forward made it very, very difficult. And this is where we're going to wrap up the video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the match and if you think this result will kick on Liverpool's season and help them get into top four. I'll see you in the next one.